Our lesson today is entitled Faithful versus Faithless. And it's found in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. This is Sunday school lesson from March the 24th, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 8th and the 9th verses of the text. And it reads as follows Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people, but one day some men from the synagogue of free slaves was uh, as it was called started to debate him and they were jews from cyrene and alexandria and sicilia and the province of asia again faithful versus faithless is our subject So the aim of this lesson is to state the charges against Stephen and its basis and critique the ends justify the means tactic used by Stephen's opponents and evaluate various ways of responding or reacting when he or she faces opposition to Jesus. Today, again, it's my YouTube channel. I ask you to please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And you'll get my lessons automatically. If I give you any value at all, please like my lessons. Please share my lessons and leave me comments all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of god with you so let us pray heavenly father we're grateful that once again you've given us an amazing lesson an amazing subject and lord we are grateful and we're grateful you've caused us to come together at this moment and lord right now we ask forgiveness of our sins wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you, we surrender our will to you at this moment. Send us the Holy Spirit, your teacher, Lord, the God, the true teacher, the God, and direct our path at this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is a lesson that I have uh, taught before, I guess about a year and a half ago. At that time, it was called Stephen's Arrest and Speech. I'm repurposing it. I just I did a, it was the the message is such an amazing lesson and I hope you enjoy it that I, I I couldn't see that I could do a better job than what I did at that moment so I've I've I renamed it with the name that uh, uh the 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 faithful but faithless and uh but I it's it the lesson is intact I just retweaked it for the purposes of this lesson amen. All of the Holy Ghost. An important verse in understanding this feeling of the Holy Holy Spirit in John 14 and 6, where Jesus promises the Spirit would, would indwell the believers uh, and it would be a permanent indwelling. He says that it will not leave us comfortless, right? That he says there was one coming after we feeling us. And it's important to distinguish the indwelling of the, and, uh, from the filling of the Spirit. The permanent indwelling of the Spirit is, is not for select believers. But it's for all believers. So what happens is also you get a feeling or anointing to do a special purpose. But the but the feeling and being full of the Holy Ghost is a totally different thing. The Holy Spirit is a gift given to all believers in Jesus without exception. No conditions are placed on this gift except faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit is given at the moment of salvation. Emphasize the same truth. Saying that the sealing or indwelling of the Spirit took place at the time of believing that's how it happens we get the we get filled with the holy spirit with the holy ghost at that moment of conversion then ultimately you have anointings that are subsequent let's move on uh, these uh, disciples or apostles you know the 12 here is a list of those 12 apostles of jesus christ amen So this book of Acts, it's a, Acts is not is the only biblical book that is uh, chronicles the history. It's basically a history book. And a lot of people want to put a lot of doctrinal points in it, but it's really a history book of the church. And immediately after Jesus' ascension, such as it prize, provides us with a valuable account of how the church was able to grow and spread from Jerusalem to the rest of the Roman Empire. You know, living out that that great commission to go into the world and make and make these disciples go into the world and take this uh, this this gospel message to the other most parts of the of the of the known world, and only in three decades, 
decades, a small group of frightened believers in Jerusalem transformed, transformed into an empire-wide movement of people who committed their lives to Jesus Christ. Ending on a high note, with Paul on the verge of taking his gospel to the highest government officials in the land and ultimately the emperor of Rome. And, but again, that's the, the Acts of the Chronicle, the, the Acts of the Apostles of the Chronicle in this book. Amen. So again, uh, where we are here in this uh, in this uh, lesson, the, 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 the setting of this text, that Jesus has already gone to the cross. There was this resurrection, and, and Jesus was seen by Mary, and Jesus was seen by the disciples, right? And Jesus returned and, 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 and is seen over the next 50 days as many as 500 times, over the next 40 days or so, I'm sorry. And, and Jesus tells of the comfort that's going to come. He says it's going to come to those 120 people in the upper, upper, upper room. And, and Jesus will go back to the Father after the 40 days, and, and on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit will come and dwell those people Ultimately, those people in the room, but ultimately the people in that region. And evidence of the Holy Spirit was seen that they were filled, that there was evidence that they, they that uh, the Spirit is seen, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they would speak in tongues that they did not speak before. The people in, in, in Hebrew can hear it in Latin and people in, in Aramaic can hear it in their languages and, and ultimately everybody can converse because that will give them all the ability to, to spread the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. Amen. Peter preached an amazing message, which was right after this, the first uh, message that he would pe preach, and, and over 3,000 are, are saved in this first message. And the gospel message is spreading, folks were receiving this Holy Spirit, and they were receiving those gifts that I share with you, the, the Spirit, right? And the first century church is growing, and the gospel is going forth, and, and hopefully, because of the size and the growth of this first century church, they would have to move outside of the city. And, and remember, there was a lame man who was, was lame for over 40 years, who would always be taught, brought to the gate that, that, that he would ultimately be, be healed. And, the, and people were amazed. And, and then these apostles, because of their the, because of their faith and because of what they were doing, and because of the Jewish leaders did not like what they were doing, that they that Peter and John would be thrown into jail. And the Jewish leaders are disturbed, and Peter was by bold preaching by the power of the Holy Spirit. And those apostles went back to the people, and 5,000 more are added to the church in the name and the power of Jesus is, is, is powerful enough. And all are being filled by this Holy Spirit. And the apostles are in jail, but they have a miraculous escape, if you know that story. They're beaten, and the growth of the church is unstoppable. The healings and miracles, and they're gone with them wherever they would go. And we are a couple of years since this cross in our lesson today to give you some perspective of the setting to where we are today. The life cycle of God's chosen people. Amen. So here today we're in Act Six, and we will will give you the the the, the beginning parts of this Act Six that'll lead us up to this lesson, uh, and hopefully you'll find some value in as an on ramp into this lesson. Amen. So in Acts chapter 6, uh, verse 1, now, about this time, again, some perspective of timing, when the number of disciples were increasing, a, a, a complaint was being made by the Hellenistic, uh, those Greek-speaking Jews I share with you in these last when we were talking about the book of Hebrews, uh, with the Hellenistic Jews, and they, they were Greek-speaking, they were still Jews, but they, 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 they didn't just speak Hebrew, and then and against the, there's a, a, a complaint against the the, the native Jews and the Hellenistic Jews because of the widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. Again, the, the growth of this church, I share with you, the 3,000 and 5,000 people outside the city, and then they just felt there was something that's not being being uh, being done right, that they needed to improve the, the service, that that, the, that 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 don't overlook the, the, the those who they feel less than those real Jews in a sense of okay? Amen. And, and honestly, this is just the uh, growing pains. Uh, here we get a first sign of the growing pains of the first century church. The Hebrew uh, widows were being cared for while the Grecian widows were being neglected. Again, just a, a function of the growing pains of this first century church. Amen. 
there in verse tw verse two, verse twelve. I share with you the twelve were the, the together they said that it is not appropriate for us to ne neglect the teaching. That's what their focus was, right? And 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 the word of God to serve tables and manage his food distribution. That they didn't want to have to deal with these issues, right? That the, that the apostles had and disciples they had other functions and that was a teaching all these thousands of people now come into the faith and they, they they said let's do let's try to figure out a plan and that that's what we coming uh, closer to our lesson today so understanding amen verse three therefore the brothers among uh they they, they chose therefore brothers chosen from among you will serve uh, were seven men, good of reputation, men of godly character and moral integrity, full of spirit and wisdom, who we may put in charge of this task. And if we know in our churches, especially maybe in the Baptist church more than some other churches, but they have these these other men who are, who are deacons, I'll get to that point as we move forward here, that this is this whole function of choosing men from a, among the flock in order to be able to to, to, to do the tasks that are that are not necessarily being done by the those who are in the hierarchy of this church. Amen. Verse 4. But we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That's what the, the disciples and apostles were trying to do. But they had a plan to make it better. They chose these seven that they will be the ones who will do this work. Amen. Verse five and six. The suggestion uh, pleased the whole congregation. So they selected Stephen, a man full of faith in Jesus Christ and filled with, and led by the Holy Ghost. And, and Philip and, and Porcorus and, and Nacanor and Timon and, and Parmenius and, and Nicholas, a proselyte. That means he was a converted Jew. That's when you see this word proselyte, that they were not necessarily born Jews, but they were converted from Antioch in verse 6. And, and they brought men from uh, before the apostles and after praying, and they laid their hands on them, and they're dedicated to the mission commission of, of this service. I remember about 30 years ago, I was uh, ordained as a deacon in the, in the Baptist church. Uh, obviously, I've, I've, I've fellowship with a lot of different kinds of church, but back back then, uh, I was I was or, I was ordained, and they and they did the same practice. They pulled men who were full of the Holy Spirit and they would use them in order to do the services uh, for the flock of the church. And this is kind of how it, it happens in all churches throughout our country, throughout the world, as well. Amen. That's where we get these deacons. They chose these three deacons for the service. That was, uh, again, that's those uh, those Hellenistic men, those men who were not necessarily all Jews. And, you know, just like you have the the um, the Samaritans, that they were half-breeds. But that was, again, these are not the, the whole Jews, but they're, you know, they're trying to make this their first, in a sense, according to Luke. The apostles solved the problem by appointing seven men to this new leadership position. And they, they look closely and you will find these men are all Hellenistic Jews. The apostles apparently realized that the majority class needed, rep, the minority class needed representation in the leadership of the church too. That it wasn't just these, these, these apostles, that everybody was an inclusive part of this old church. If anyone serves me, he must follow me with, and, and where I am and there will be my servant also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And that's the whole concept of these men full of the Holy Ghost. They would choose these seven of which Stephen was one of them. Amen. The final verse of our beginning of this lesson, uh, chapter six, the, 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 the message of God kept on growing and, and spreading. And the number of disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a large number of the priests, even the priests from the priestly line, from the, from the ironic line, from the, they, they were becoming obedient to the faith and accepting Jesus Christ and acknowledge him as a source of eternal salvation. They, they turned away from the law and go to the salvation by grace through faith. They were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course, the power of God 
for salvation for everyone who believes. That's where we go here to lead up to our lesson. Amen. That's the background, about 16 minutes of background. Let's jump into this lesson. Amen. So we begin here in verse 7, uh, in verse 8 of our text here in chapter 6. I've given you the first 7 from uh, uh, previously. Let's, let's move on to verse 8 of our text. It's Stephen's arrest and speech is our, our subject. And again, we're in Acts 6, uh, verses 8 through, I think, 15, I believe. And then chapter 7, 1 through 2a. Now, using the New Living as our backdrop here, then in verse 8, Stephen, a man of full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs amongst the people. Again, I said he was full of the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. He exercised, again, that everybody who receives the, the gifts of the Spirit, but some people have just a more encompassing uh, uh, amount of that. Again, and, and depends on what gifts that one would we give, whether it's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, or prophecy, or tongues, or interpretation of tongues, or, or the apostle teachers, or, or their leadership, or they would they would be a pastor teacher, or they would have this faith, or healing, or miraculous powers, or service, discernment helps the ministration. They all would have that as well in the giving and mercy. That these were the gifts of the Spirit that, that one would, would obtain at, at this, this point of com conversion. And ultimately, some people would get them ultimately as his anointing, as his power would, would go forth. As this man, Peter, I mean, Stephen would have this, this, uh, this phenomenal power to perform amazing miracles and signs and wonders amongst his people. He was somebody in this first century church, somebody respected. Because of his demeanor. Amen. Let's move on. Stephen was a man full of faith in Christ Jesus and filled with and led by the Holy Spirit of God. A deacon in this first century church, one of the seven, one chosen among its men, a leader, a servant of Jesus Christ, a miracle worker, a man full of grace and power. That's who he is. That's who many of us should aspire to be like this as well. Someone who's filled with the Spirit of God. And one who may be chosen a leader, a servant, a miracle worker. Someone full of love, grace, and power. We should all ascribe to those attributes as well. Amen. So our lesson, uh, verses 9 through 11, is Stephen's arrest and speech. But one day, one day, some men from the synagogue are free slaves. And I'll, I'll elaborate that on the next cell, right? And, and a, as it was called, started to debate him. Uh, Stephen, is this, uh, this Stephen? Uh, Stephen is, obviously, he's full of the, full of the Holy Spirit, right? And, and he has wisdom and he has knowledge as well. And, and he has these, these gifts of the spirit as well. And, and they try to debate him. And, and there were Jews from Cyrene and Alexandria and Sicilia and this whole province of Asia, Asia Minor. I share with you in the image in the backdrop. And you see Alexandria and, and Sicilia in the center of this lesson, of this uh, map to give you some perspective. And some of them could stand, uh, none of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit. It was with Stephen. As Stephen would speak to them, that he would be engaged and interact about this whole discussion about the widows as well. And he would understand, and they, and they would also interact with the, as he discussed about other parts of the faith, right? And they, so they persuaded some of these men to lie about Stephen. Again, these, these, these men from the synagogue are, are free slaves, and, 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 uh, and so they were persuaded. And, and they, they would say that we heard him to Stephen. And he blasphemed against Moses and even God. Again, as I share with you that definition of blasphemy, that one has um, has judgment against them for doing this act against these deities or you know God as well as Moses, religious leaders as well. Give you some perspective of where we are. Let's move on in this lesson. Expect magnify this. Synagogue of free slaves to give you some perspective of that as well. Next slide. Amen. So 
the synagogue of free, free slaves and scholars contend that these freemen were not Jewish proselytes, not those who were converted, right, right, but Jews by birth who had been taken into captivity by the Romans. Remember, remember Paul, Apostle, I mean, Saul of Tarsus was one of those that he was Greek speaking as well, right? And he was, and he, and he was, and he was a Roman citizen, right? And that's why they, they, he was able to do a lot more things when he was, uh, was preaching the gospel, right? But the Jews by birth were taken into captivity by the Romans. And then, and then set and then set free again. That's the whole thing of of, of these freed slaves and and something they call liberty or libertini. And they were also uh, there were many of these kind of uh, Jewish folks. And some have speculated that among these were the zealous members of the synagogue of Freeman was this one Saul of Tarsus. Remember, he was a zealous. He was he was he was prolific and dynamic, and he and he knew the law, and he was a he was a a, a Pharisee of Pharisees, right, right, right. There's these zealous who have been more than capable of disputing this one Stephen in the matters of religion, in the matters of all aspects of 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 of, of uh, of providing this administration to these people. Amen. Again, the synagogue of free slaves, some perspective for you. Amen. Let's move on. Let me magnify another point. So here's the thing. You know, when people are trying to come at you, they, they, they can't kill the truth. Because, you know, you, you speak the truth, but they can try to assassinate your character, and that's what they did. They heard that that they 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 had these people to come, and and they would speak lies that they heard that that he was blaspheming Moses and even God, and that, because they could not they could not debate him in a proper manner. So now you got to throw an audible, and you got to say, well, uh, well then he, he he was blaspheming Moses and he, even God, right? And you can't kill the truth. They got to assassinate your character. Let's move on to your text to the text of Numbers. Stephen's arrest and speech. And now we're going from verses 12 through 14. And they they ruse the, the people and the elders and the teachers and the religious law, members of the law. That's the scribes and the Pharisees and those, those lawyers and all those religious leaders. And so, and so, 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 they arrested Stephen. And they brought him before the high council, and that be the Sanhedrin, right? And verse 13. And, then, and the lion witnesses said that this man is always speaking against the holy temple and against the law of Moses. Uh, I, I would think so. Verse 14. And we have heard him say that that, that Jesus of Nazareth, that, that, that crucified Messiah, that king of the Jews, that he said that he will destroy the temple and change the custom of Moses that are handed down to us. And that we heard him say this. Let's magnify a point here, uh, here that give you some perspective of, of yeah, he, he probably did say that. Let's move on. Amen. So Stephen was a, a, a accused of the same charge in which the Sanhedrin accused Jesus as threatening to destroy the temple and damage the religious structures against this Roman law and it's punishable by death. Again, as I said about this blasphemy, that, that they're, that they're punishable by death for this blasphemy. We find in Mark 14 and 58 that Jesus would say, I heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, uh, that, that I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another one made without hands. Let's magnify some more points along this whole concept. That's what Jesus did say. And no doubt, Stephen's probably saying the same as well. Amen. When Jesus says he was destroyed his temple in three days and I was raised up, he, Jesus said that his temple has been under construction for 46 years. The Jews were saying this. And, and you were raised up in three days? But he was speaking of his the temple, of his own body, right? And he, and he asked that he'll be raised from the dead. These disciples remember what he had said, and, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken, that he was talking about raising up the temple in three days. And again, the problem is when you have people that are knowledgeable about the word, they want to take pieces of the of the Bible, and they want to throw pieces back at you. They're not, not understanding the whole totality of the word. You know how that is with people? 
that people want to sit there and say, oh, but the Bible says this, and it's like, what about this? And they want to take pieces out of context. Let's move on to magnify another point about this whole uh, contrast between this word that, as, as Stephen may have been saying, as a contrast between the law. And then, again, let's move on. So again, the subject of our lesson, and, and, and again, that I give this faithfulness is a, is a concept of unfailing, enduring loyalty to someone or something, or putting that loyalty into con consistent practice, regardless of the extenuating cir circumstances. And Stephen situated, I see Stephen's situation is here. That's what we're learning today, and keeping to one's promise no matter uh, the uh, the prevailing circumstances. Literally. It's a state of being full of faith in the sense of steady devotion to a person or to a cause. The religious leaders here uh, were faithless. Their theology was more about their own social uh, status and or economical power that uh, they possessed because of their position in society. And here in this lesson, Stephen clashed with the, the faithful leaders of society that that it's like when, when someone's light is burning so bright and, and folks who are in, in position of power, they can't see where someone's outshining them. That was a position that they had with Jesus as well, that, that Jesus was, was greater than they were. So they had to do everything they could in that instance in order to stop him from his journey as well. If that's the issue that's happening here with this one, Stephen, a deacon of the church, a man full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a resting speech in verse 15 of our text here. And at this point, at this point, everyone in the high council, the, the, the Sanhedrin, those, those, those scribes and Pharisees and the Sanhedrin group, they, they stared at Stephen. They, they heard him they speaking. They, they were, they were, they heard. They, they saw him in this presence of, of the, of these folks. And, and again, he's been arrested at this point. And, 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 and because of, uh, they, they stared at him. His, his face became bright as an angel. Here, in this particular venue. Amen. Let's move on. So this ends our present text, the, this last verse. And let's move on to close out this lesson. Again, I've repurposed a lesson prior, but, uh, but, I, but the essence is so amazing. I believe there's two more cells to close out this lesson. These leaders had to put out the light of this amazing man, this, uh, this, this man full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, a follower of Jesus Christ, and, and, and this is what happens to us sometimes when our light shines brighter than those who are in charge. Let's move on to close. Amen. Jesus was crucified because he gave a better message to God's people, a message of salvation by grace through faith, and not that law, not keeping those 615 laws, the 10 laws by Moses, but the, all of the laws and, and the temple and the priesthood are, are, are now becoming insignificant, that they were all that in a bag of chips, that everybody followed the law, the temple, and everything else, and people, and I share with you that even the priests were leaving the temple worship, and they were following after the law, they were following after this, the gospel message, they were following after Jesus, right? This man was unable to keep the laws. A man has all has been able to keep those laws for all the time. And 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 Jesus' message, and also in Stephen's message that he was actually speaking was absolutely against the law and these Jewish traditions. As I just shared with you before in that chart, right? The Jewish leaders did not like Stephen's power. They didn't like his signs. They didn't like his authority and his service to God's people and, and to the Gentile soul. They arrested him. That's who we are in this moment, and, and they're, they're having this interaction with this man that, 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 that they're wondering, is, is, is this true? Next one. It's not been a couple years since Jesus had been sent to the cross, 
at the hands of these same religious leaders who are now interacting with 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 with, uh, with Stephen, and 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 this first century church is growing by leaps and bounds, and, and they cannot stand this movement of Almighty God that makes Judaism less than right. Again, I share with you, priests are leaving, and people are, and this word is against that whole temple worship, and they're all against what they are. And, and so the, the leaders, even along with the Saul of Tarsus, they will find later on, they need these people to come back to their worshiping, and Stephen was just in their way. The Stephen, the man full of the Holy Ghost. And what Stephen teaches us today is that we need to be fierce in the face of opposition. We seek the power and wisdom of the Spirit in our efforts to speak the truth. To speak the truth, the power. That, that when folks come up against us and they, and they, 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 they want to know that what, what we're saying is maybe against what they have traditionally heard, but they but they, again that they, that the, the Bible is true and, and 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 the word of God is true and, and, and again that our salvation is is by grace through faith. And, and, it, and it's not by maybe you were taught in the church and gave you some kind of wacky conversation or whatever, but, but, but Peter would no doubt was a man full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom and power. And, and he, would, he, would, he would have the signs and wonders and he would, he would speak this truth to power. That's what our goal in this life is to be like Peter and like, like, like Stephen here. When we face the opposition that comes against us, when people try to challenge the word of God, we have studied to make ourselves approve that that when 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 that's that's the whole purpose that he was one in the church, one who had these qualities, one who had, who had made himself relevant to the whole body, one that had and exercised the gifts that were in the, that were, he received and he used those gifts to the betterment of this church. That that's what our goal should be as well, to, to speak the truth to power against all who come against us. And, and, and next week we will continue what happens as this, this, this narrative of this when Stephen, I can't elaborate more because I don't want to delve too much into next week's lesson, but this is what we should be doing as, as we should be like this one Stephen. Give the Bible gives us somebody the pattern our life after. That's the pattern of why men and uh, who are chosen from amongst the other men in the church, those who have allowed the Holy Spirit to move and exercise the gifts within our lives, and and and, and, and that's how we are all called to do. And that is our Sunday school lesson this week. And I've heard it's something you've learned this week. Strengthen your faith that the Lord provides all of your needs. Needs you learn something worthy of sharing. And ask this always in the matchless name of Jesus, this God's Son and our Savior. In his name we do pray and ask these things always. Thank you so much for your time.